Hi everybody, look what I'm wearing. Look at this, I'm an intrepid viewer. I finally got it together to send off and get one. Of course it should say I'm an intrepid reader, but I'm not gonna do a one-off. So you can see what they look like and I'll put the details up at the end of this video. Now, we're just a few weeks away from an absolutely major anniversary. And that would be three years of Donald Trump not being elected to be president. Three years. And during that time, not only in America, but all over the world, we've watched. We've watched him send off thousands of inarticulate ravings. We've watched him go on the international stage uh, and say he believed Putin over the American services. We watched him get his deputy star by taking the troops out of North Syria. We watched him abuse Gold Star families, uh, intimidate witnesses, run up a trillion dollar debt. We watched it all happen. And in the meantime, the Republicans seem to have stood back and gone, well, he may be this and that, but he's our guy. You know, how good is he? We got our tax cut. Hell, we can even pollute the Gulf of Mexico. We can kill all the rivers. We can mine in Alaska. You know, we don't have to be responsible for anything. We don't have to pay a living wage to our workers. You know, we can demonise Mexicans. We can convince our voters they don't need health care, they just need another AK-47. He's our guy. Hallelujah. Well, we live in strange times, do we not, viewers? So this is January for Trump. And normally I do it week by week, but it's much bigger than that. It's much more symbolic than that, and it affects the country more than that. So I'm going to do a different type of reading. So I'm using my new Rider Waits and my very nice new cards. Thank you, Denise, New World Tarot. They are too nice for this sort of work and these sort of people. So I'm going to use those for private um, readings. Right. So I'm back to a sort of new rehashed version of the Rider Waits. And they also come with a set of 12 astrology cards as well to give you a little extra flavor on the reading. So let's get straight down to it. The Teflon Yeti, you'd have to think the shine would be wearing off soon, you know. Where are these Republicans' heads at, you know? Yeah, he's our guy. You know, we can make 13-year-old girls have babies. Isn't that great? You know, then we can deprive children of the SNAP program. Where is their compassion? And they call themselves Christians. It's just beyond the beyond. So, here we go. Here we go. It's happening for... Trump in January 2020, a new decade. So let's see what it holds. Oh, God bless America. Yeah. Oh, this is very interesting. This is very, very interesting. Now we get to him. Look. Well, wow, these cards are incredible. I'll talk you through the first ones. Look, here's the strength card. As soon as I threw this card, I immediately heard the country, i.e. not Trump. Strength the country. And also, remember, I talked in my last or oh, video two ago, Another reader suggested she sees the star, which is hope and inspiration, as representing America. And I'm seeing these initial cards as the country, and then it moves into Trump land. So the country, 
without wanting to use the language of the patriarchy, needs a gentle father, a father who's emotionally in touch, a father who's secure in his own masculinity and can be generous. So this does not exclude a strong woman, but that's the energy of what's required. The Page of Swords fighting the good fight, there needs to be some, where is the outrage, America? All these things he's done, and all we've heard, sorry, a little digression, is a whimper from the sidelines, from Lisa Murkowski or whatever her name is, saying, no, oh, I'm a bit disturbed. A bit disturbed? 300 million out of 360 million should be outraged on a daily basis. But this is the card of righteous anger. It can also be a spy in the camp, but I think this is still speaking to the country and the potential <coughs> is there. This is a really fascinating configuration. Ace of Cups, yes, the whole election will be emotional, but this is good emotional energy here stemming from the calmness of some figure who will lead the Dems. I'm not a Biden fan, have to say, and the mainstream media has just worked out. Bernie's doing really well and pipping Biden in a lot of cases. But in any event, this is a more sane, sentient energy for the country. All right. Then we move into Trump's story for January. The five of cups, loss and disappointment. Um, it's hard to know what really rocks his boat and what constitutes disappointment for him. Uh, it could be that not enough people are adoring him on a daily basis. But this does speak to loss and it speaks to an exile and isolation. He's still the Teflon Yeti, the magician with a slightly mad edge to it but it's going to need some strong juju to actually move this man. It's not going to be the usual sort of, ah, oh, let's just discuss this and let's have another debate, is not going to cut it. So it's like the Dems have to come up with some strong magic too, literally, to counter his story. He's pulling out all the aces because he's a wounded yeti. He's an unpopular leader. Yes, victory at any cost. And the Republicans have said now, what trial? It's only going to be a rubber stamp. They've actually gone that far. They could have not convicted him and gone through the motions of a trial. And so now they're caught in the, their own servile sucking up to the Yeti. Now, this is him with people walking away from him. Yes, he's still the one with two swords, but this is people walking away saying, this guy might have led us to a victory, but the price is too much. Now, I'm not feeling this is going to be a huge swathe of Republicans. It doesn't have to be. It has to be doesn't matter what happens in the Senate. It ha matters what happens on the ground for people to walk away and go, no, it's been too much. And this is karmic for America, the wheel of fortune, right? Now, I'm not an astrologer, but I've been following a few astrologers who are doing the political work. And America's coming up for a 400 year thing because we all tend to fixate on um, 1789 or 92, whatever it was, but it actually goes back further. 400 years, it's a Pluto return, going back right to the basics of what brought people, the early Calvinists, the early stuff, and that wanting separation of church and state and wanting to be free, that has been prostituted and distorted by the modern evangelicals and this... Billy Graham, foul world, prosperity gospel. You know, if you're poor, it's your fault. Just pray a bit more and give me your money and I'll give you a conduit to the guy. Right. 
this cannot continue. This is an epic, epic, karmic moment by moment. I mean, the next five years moment for America. Oh, wow. This is interesting. I had a feeling it wouldn't be a conventional month by month. And it's not. It really isn't. So I'm going to pull um, three astrological cards now to give us a bit more about the energy. So I want energy. See what's up for. I think the magician, the page of swords and the wheel of fortune. I want to see what they're about. They're about. Okay. Ooh. Scorpio, Gemini, and Virgo. Okay, this makes total sense to me. On top of the magician, Scorpio. So Scorpio gets a bad rap um, for various reasons, but it's also the, the great transformer. So all the signs have a low vibrational energy, a middle and a higher energy. So if... Um, someone is a low vibration of whatever sign they are, they show certain negative qualities and then you progress to higher qualities. So this is very deep stuff. The Scorpio magician energy at its darkest and its most basic is very uh, vicious and destructive and at its highest, it's highly transformative and healing. So people have to decide what side of the fence they're on. The Page of Swords, this is the righteous indignation. This is taking up the sword for justice. This is not a time in history to just go, oh, well, it's all too much and I don't like any of them and I'm just going to go on eBay. No, it's a time for engagement and fighting for what you believe in. And this is Gemini. Um, <laughs> and... On the one hand, the Yeti is a Gemini and he flip-flops and, like I said, a low vibration energy of it, not taking responsibility, staying childlike at 73, that stuff. On a higher vibrational level, it's about mega communication really quickly, people grasping complicated, complex ideas really quickly. And the Dems should take this as a warning. Do not dumb down your appeal to Americans. They can grasp it really quickly if the communication, swords are air and communication, if the communication is clear, they will get it. I think everyone should watch um, AOC's five minute corruption game, in case you've forgotten about it. When she first got into Congress, she did it and like I said, it's only five minutes. Google it if you haven't seen it. It tells you everything that's wrong with American politics in five minutes. Um, but this Gemini energy can be fresh and a breakthrough. And then over the Wheel of Fortune, which is the karmic wheel turning in America, you have Virgo, which is very good, sane, sensible and it's also an earth sign that speaks to the body this is health care they can win this election on the health care issue if they do it right if they do it right oh wow so i'll take you back to the first card which is the strength card this is about taming the beast and taming, sometimes it means taming our own animal instincts, but it's taming the beast. And it's a woman taming the beast. And you'd have to think there is more than a tiny metaphor for Nancy Pelosi, mother of five, bringing the beast to heel. You know, interesting story in that. Okay, then, beloveds, my next one's going to be on the economy because you know how I feel about the stock market being used as a measure of the economy. I'm so sick of that. <sighs> okay, love you all. Don't forget, if you can't find it on your phone, look this up on a tablet and I'll tell you how to get there. You get your very own 
T-shirt. And Zazzle takes, I think they're $26, and Zazzle takes $24.50 or something. So Dave and I are going to donate the Gap $1.50 or something to a charity down the track if we sell enough to make a contribution. So it's for a good cause. Also, thank you all for your comments about my collaboration with Whimsy. We had fun. That was good. Um, and I'd love to do more of those. I think all of us readers are doing our best in challenging times um, to read for you. And so if anyone's in touch with Linda G, I'd love to do a collab with her. And I'll be doing one soon with Dave from Moonride. So all the best. Keep your comments coming. Love you guys. Bye now. Ciao.